some new things going on on my computer and I'm trying to get everything working correctly. <laughs> well, we're just one week out from Halloween. I hope everybody is ready for Halloween. And if not, it's okay if you don't celebrate. I don't really celebrate, but I do love all the decorations. We live in an area where the houses are like five acres and ten acres apart, so we don't really get any trick-or-treaters up here that much. Maybe just my granddaughter. <laughs> well, we got a lot to talk about today, so I have a big old mug of good old Folgers coffee. <laughs> I decided I better use a green straw so that my jack-o'-lantern looks like it has a stem. <laughs> Everybody, let's clink in. Clinkity clink clink. <laughs> okay, so we really do have a lot to talk about, but before we get started, I wanted to tell you, I don't know if you all were over on my Facebook page or not, but the other night, I, I think it was Sunday night, I was watching the Santa's uh, Stakeout movie on the Hallmark Channel, and I love the Hallmark Channel. I am a sucker for all the Christmas and even the fall Hallmark Channel uh, movies. Well, the Santa Stakeout, if you haven't watched it, it is my all-time favorite that I've watched ever. I love Tamara, I think her name's Tamara uh, Mowry. She's married, but I don't remember her married name. And the gentleman who played with her in this movie, they were so good together. The chemistry was amazing, but, <clears throat> and I think she's hilarious. She has a way of being serious and hilarious and really pulls you in at the same time. Well, anyway, um, while I was watching it, they were in front of like a store and they had this rainbow uh, crocheted deer hanging down on display. And I, it caught my attention immediately. I grabbed my camera and I took a picture. The picture's a little bit blurry. But anyway, I have been trying to find a pattern for this online. I found a couple that you could probably use with some rainbow yarn and make a really cute reindeer. But it is just the cutest thing. Now, if you, want to, if you haven't seen the show, check the Hallmark listings. I'm sure they'll play it again because it is an adorable show. And, and she and he both do the same. What is that? Tamara Mallory Housley. That's it. I, I just love her. And, you know, years ago, she and her sister Tia did a, did a sitcom where they were sisters. Of course, they're twin sisters. And I loved it because they did some of the funniest things. And they're both just naturals. Now, I, haven't, I don't know if Tia does... Uh, Hallmark or not, but I know uh, Tamara does, and I just I just love her. She's one of my favorite actresses that they use. Um, but anyway, look for the show. You'll love the show. But also, I, I just really love when I'm watching something and I see something crochet in the background or just something they that they have like, um, you know, like a silly scarf or you know, um, I think uh, Young Sheldon that that sitcom. She's always pretending to knit or crochet, and it's obvious she doesn't know how. <laughs> but there's always an Afghan on the back of the couch, you know, things like that. So I really enjoy finding that sort of thing on TV. I hope you all will go and watch that one, though. That was just so cute. I'm going to watch it a bunch of times. I am. Okay, so now let's get to talking about our crochet along that we're going to do next week. I've had a lot of emails about what yarns to use and things like that. So next Monday, we're going to begin, it's going to be in, in three steps. <laughs> On Monday, we're going to begin, it's going to be a Christmas tree skirt. And on Monday, we're going to do the basics of it. I'm going to tell you what you need. I'll tell you today as well. But we're going to do the basics of it. And I'm going to click over here to my top cam. All right, so um, I've got some, you know, I'm going to be using this. And you're going to need about 12 to 13 ounces and I don't have the yard uh, calculation for that, but you're good. But um, there's several different yarns that you can use. You are going to need a medium weight number four yarn, and I'm going to be using this Craft Smart yarn. I ordered it a while back, and I, it's called Cranberry and Ivy or Ivy and Cranberry. I can never remember. Ivy and Cranberries. 
Okay, it's a variegated and a long striping yarn. Some other choices is this works great. This is the Holiday Puff from Hirschner's. You can see it's got good holiday colors in there. And if you don't have these yarns, you can get this. This will work just fine. Um, the main color, like I said, you're going to need about 12 to 13 ounces. And then I just dropped the other three on the ground. <laughs> and then you're going to need a solid green, a solid white. There's a dog hair on there. Don't look at that. <laughs> and then a solid red. Now, what I would do is try to get ones to match the yarn I'm going to use. This one's a little more cranberry, so it will match with this cranberry here. But if you're using this one, you might want to go with the red. Now, you don't have to do it in a variegated. You can do it in solids if you want to. But the main, I'm calling it the main body or the main portion of the Christmas tree skirt is going to be in a variegated. And then we're going to do a, a couple of stripes of solid. And we're going to end with the white and a really fun snowball trim. All right. So just so that you can, you know, get ready for what we're doing. That's what you're going to need. Um, but that's it. You don't need any buttons or ribbons or anything like that. It's a really basic pattern, but it comes out really pretty. And I have to tell you, I finished the test on Saturday and I showed it to my husband and he even goes, wow, that's really pretty. I love that trim. So you're really going to like it if he likes it. Although I have to say my husband is really good at picking out colors and he's, he's the best for going yarn shopping with me. Okay. Now, again, you can also use any Christmas variegated yarn you have on hand. Um, I think I love this uh, yarn has a really pretty variegated one. Um, but like I said, you don't even have to use variegated. You could stripe the whole thing using um, different colors if you want to. I think it would really be pretty, you know, if you're going to match your, your tree skirt to your Christmas tree and say your Christmas tree is all in blues, you could use a blue variegated and three different shades of blue. I, I would stick with white at the end, though, because we're going to make a little snowball trim. Okay, oh, or, or maybe your Christmas trees in purples and silvers. You could use those colors for your tree skirt. Okay, so you don't have to use traditional Christmas colors. All right, I just wanted to let you all know that so you can get ready. All right, so on Monday, we're going to do the basic body of the tree skirt. On Wednesday, we're going to do the striping part as far as the stripe trim. And then on Friday, when we normally do a uh, Friday fun with Sarah, we're going to do the trim. That way, I can teach you how to do the trim, and you can use it on anything. You'll love this trim. <laughs> All right, so that's what's going to happen next week. Now, what I wanted to do next, and I don't know if this is going to work. I'm going to try. Um, I want to talk to you a little bit about how to um, navigate on YouTube. All right, I'm going to see if I can get this to go over there. All right, here is my YouTube channel, Sarah Satch. And one of the questions that I get all the time is, where are your pattern and playlists? So what you can do is you can go to Sarah Satch. And right up here at the top, you can see it says Home, Videos, Playlists. And you can click that. Okay, and I'm going to bring this up so you can see there are my playlists. Stitch of the Month, Friday Fun, Container, things like that. But you can also search. Um, see up here where the search is, up here above this picture? You can search to see what patterns that I have. All right, so let's go back home. Here is where we're at. Now, if you're wanting to know how to find the description box, okay, so here is a pattern. I'm going to click on this. Let's stop that. We don't want that silly commercial. If you don't like the commercials, you can click the X that'll show up and get rid of the commercials, okay? But the question I get all the time is, where is that description box? Now, you'll notice right here, underneath here, it says, see more. And then all this shows up. It explains everything. Usually the pattern is at the top. You can click that. That'll take you to the written pattern. And then if you're looking for how to contact me, down here at the bottom, you can see it has my blog, my YouTube channel, the group, that's our Facebook group, 
You also can find my webpage here and everywhere else that I'm at. All right. Okay, so let's go back to our regular. There's where we're streaming. And we'll go back to our front. Okay, now let me ans answer some questions that I get all the time. All right. One of the questions I get all the time is, why is your video so loud? Or why is your video so soft? Okay, one thing you need to understand is you can control the sound on your device. Okay, so if, you, if you're watching a video and it's really loud on YouTube and you've adjusted the volume on YouTube, go to your device. Whether you're using your phone, your computer, a laptop, um, an iPad. I, I do most of mine on my iPad because I like to watch on my iPad because I can bring it up or I can bring it down. Okay. Now, another thing to remember is that every YouTube channel films differently as far as the sound. And so you may have to adjust that then on YouTube, right under the video, there's a thing that you can do that. You can adjust it louder or quieter. Okay, another thing that I get a question about is you're going too fast or I'm going too slow. And those are also things that you can adjust. One of the complaints that people don't like is that if the introduction to the video is too long, well, you know what? You can fast forward through that. Just hit that little arrow and move it along and you can fast forward through that beginning intro. Okay, then you know, you can stop it where you want to. If the video is moving too fast, you can adjust the speed. You can adjust it slower. And then it will move a little bit slower. Okay? Now, another thing that you can do, if you've already done part of the video and you want to get more towards the end, just fast forward to the end. You know, you it, it's up to you how fast, how slow, how quickly. And one of the things that, that you need to remember is, especially with mine, if I'm going to do 25 rows of double crochet, I'm not going to, I'm not going to film all that 25 rows of double crochet. You will get totally bored and so will I, okay? So what I'll do is I'll say, okay, whatever row we're on, say we're on row 10, and I'll say, okay, now we're going to repeat row 10 for 25 more rows, okay? And then the next thing will come up, it'll say, I have just repeated those 25 rows. Now, what you can do is you can pause it, stitch your 25 rows or whatever, and then unpause it. <laughs> See, so it, it, it's up to you how good a, a, a time you're going to have on YouTube. Okay, the other thing is, why do I have ads on my videos? Okay, so just to, just to be transparent, my videos on YouTube are free for you. They're not free to me. They cost me money <laughs> because, you know, I have, um, you know, several, lap, uh, several screens. I have like seven lights. I have four cameras and I have five, sorry, five cameras that I use all the time. I also have a microphone. I also have photo editing. Uh, video editing programs that I have to purchase. And plus, I don't, I, I buy all my own yarn. I do have a few sponsors that um, from time to time will send me things to give away and things like that. But also, the giveaways, I purchase those as well most of the time. Sometimes I get things from different companies. But also, I have to pay to ship those to you. And I'm happy to do that. But what I'm trying to say is... Um, if um, you want to continue to have free videos and free patterns from me, there will be an ad. And what I try to do is make an ad at the beginning, not make, but put <laughs> an ad at the beginning and at the end of my tutorials. Now, a video like today, this is a, a live video. YouTube will decide where to put those videos, or I'm sorry, where to put those ads. But... One thing you can do is you, there's a little X and it says skip this ad and you can skip it, okay? So, um, a lot of these things that we complain about are things that we can fix. 
We can skip the ads. We can turn the volume up and down on our device or on YouTube. We can fast forward. We can slow down. We can pause. We can e even change how quickly a video is going, but not a live video. You can't, <laughs> you can't adjust the how fast it's going on a live video, but all the other things you can. <laughs> okay. <clears throat> And so really use those things on YouTube. The other thing you can do is if you prefer to have those subtitles, you can turn them on. I don't have them turned on on my video because most of the people do not care for them. And that's why I decided not to do it. Because if you want those subtitles, you can turn those on yourself. And so then you have a better time on YouTube. Um, um, a couple of weeks ago, I did have one video that was sounding a little bit um, like it was going through a bucket. And so it was when we did some updates trying to change over. Because remember, I used to film my live videos on Facebook. Now I do them on YouTube. And I love the platform on YouTube. It's a lot of fun. I love that I can see you chatting before we get started. You can come in. Um, what I try to do is... Uh, my video starts at 9.30 Mountain Time. And what I try to do at 9.25, get everything ready to go. And so you can come in five minutes till and start talking to each other. You can ask each other what you're drinking today. Or are you working on something? Or what are you doing today? Or where are you going? Anybody going yarn shopping? You can talk amongst yourselves and get to know each other even better. And so you have, you have a lot of these things on YouTube to make your experience a lot better, okay? <clears throat> um, another thing that is really, really important that you need to understand is that I believe that the crochet community is important. But I also believe that it's changing all the time because it is an art form. And one of the complaints that I have gotten lately is so one designer calls a pattern one thing, another designer calls that same pattern another thing, and another designer calls it another thing, and then this person's making up names. Well, it's okay. Don't let those sort of things frustrate you because I have books from, uh, I think the, the first book I bought or I got at the, from the library was written in like 1927, I think. And it calls all these patterns that we're doing nowadays by completely different names. Okay, and I have probably five or six different books that are just pattern books. And if you look through them, um, they're called different names. And even the one we did last Monday has six different names. <laughs> you know, um, in one of my books, it's called The Clever Blocks, which was the wicked washcloth that we did that's a square. You know, another one calls it, um, um, I can't remember, but it, it's, one of them calls it plaid, and it's not plaid at all. And so it, it is um, one of those things we just have to live with. Uh, crochet designers years ago use different terminology than we do nowadays. I've had people tell me that I do something wrong because I explained it differently than how it was explained to them, even though they're doing the same thing. And so so don't let those things frustrate you. Um, like I said, I love crochet, and it's an ever-changing art form. And it's okay to change with it. I mean, some of you that are my age, because I I'll, I'm 58 years old. I haven't, I don't usually tell people that, so don't tell anyone, okay? <laughs> but, you know, crochet, even written patterns 25, 30 years ago are nothing like they are today. Nothing. Those patterns were so hard to figure out. Okay, well, do you get paid if we watch the ads? Yes, I do. Not very much, <laughs> you know, but enough to cover costs, you know, to help me stay current and to help me have current equipment because technology changes every five minutes. I am telling you every five minutes, you know, and I want to have the latest technology so that I can bring you the latest stuff, you know. And so, yes, I do get paid if you watch the videos or the ads. What I always tell people is turn on the tutorial let the ad run, go get your cup of coffee and a bag of M&Ms or something, something that's not going to melt in your hands while you're crocheting. <laughs> and then get started, you know, and if an ad comes on in the middle, then uh, run to the potty and come back just like you do when you're watching TV. All right, don't don't let the ads frustrate you. It, 
it's 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 important so that I can get paid to get some money to be able to continue to do what I do. Because, <clears throat> as I always say, I can't do any of this without all of you. Right? <laughs> because we're a team. All righty. So anyway, I, wa I wanted to discuss this. I saw a couple of different threads this week. Um, one on Twitter, one on um uh, Facebook, where they were complaining about a lot of these things. And they're things that we can fix ourselves to make our experience on YouTube a lot better. All right. Okay. Now let's talk about what happened this week at Posh Pooch Designs. Now I'm going to click over to this other camera real quick. This is our new hood. It's called the Willow Wood Wood. Willow Wool Hood with faux fur trim. It is an absolutely beautiful hat and it works up really fast. And the thing that I want you to know is even though it's made out of a super wash wool, you don't have to make it out of wool. You can use any meaty, or I'm sorry, a, a, a chunky five. You can use any chunky five yarn to make that uh, hood. Okay. Now, one thing I did wanted to tell you about, I did a little um, investigating because the wool that I used, willow wool, it's called daily wool, uh, daily willow wool. I keep wanting to say wood. <laughs> it's not made out of wood. It's made out of wool. So anyway, um, I did some investigating about the difference between superwash wool and regular wool. Because if I use regular wool, my hands break out and I am itchy from head to toe. It just, I can't handle it. But if I use superwash wool, it doesn't affect me. And it's something that they do in the process. And so um, check that out. I put a link on the video for that wood. Uh, wood. <laughs> I put a link underneath the video for the Willow Wool Hood that you can click that will explain to you the difference between regular wool and superwash wool. All right, the other thing we did is, remember last week we did the one hour cowl. And I love this cowl, it's absolutely beautiful and it's comfy to wear. So, we did a one hour beanie to go with the cowl. So now you've got a set, okay? And this makes a great Christmas present, by the way. And so we did that super easy and fun. And then on Friday for Friday fun day, it was super fun. I I'm just going to have to tell you, super fun. Hang on, two seconds. All right. We made creepy spiders. There's the brown kind of gray one. Here's the orange one. Okay. Then we also made covers that look like pumpkins. <laughs> And then we made skulls. And it was supposed to be creepy, but they don't look creepy. They're too cute. <laughs> and they're just sucker covers. And you can get blow pops. You can get Tootsie Pops, whatever you want that's about this size. And um, they make super great. Um, I'm sorry, I, got, I, got, I was reading the question. It went by too fast. <laughs> Oh, Stephanie says, Team Sarah. Woo, 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 Team Sarah. <laughs> you are. You're all part of my team. Okay, so we did that this last Friday. Now, this week for Friday Fun Day, I got something super silly and fun to make. And the only hint I'm going to give you is that you need some beige yarn and some sort of a variegated to make a turkey tail. <laughs> and it just takes a little bit because we're going to make something fun. And then you're also going to need a magnet. <laughs> now you can, now remember a couple weeks ago when we made the magnets to, to put on the refrigerator that look like a frame? Well, you can use, if you've got any of that magnet left, that's a magnet sheet, you can use that. Or you can just pick up some magnets um, at the store. You know, they're super cheap. Um, I have some of that left. And so I'm going to use it and just cut it in squares. But you're going to like this. It's a lot of fun. Okay, I'll tell you what we're going to do. We're going to make turkey butts. <laughs> <laughs> They're super fun to make and super easy, and um, it's it's a turkey butt magnet that can also be used as a coaster. <laughs> I just think they're super fun, and we're getting ready to head towards Thanksgiving, and it'd be a lot of fun to, to have people over and, and see what they think <laughs> about a turkey butt. 
<laughs> I got the idea because of the chicken butts. <laughs> okay. <clears throat> Let me get control over my giggle. <laughs> All right, so I know that that is a lot to talk about today, <clears throat> but I, again, I want you to have a good experience on YouTube. I want you to enjoy going in there and finding patterns and having lots of fun, um, but also um, don't let these things frustrate you, you know? Uh, it, it's kind of a choice, you know, learning how to use YouTube. Um, there's just so much you can use it for and learn um, and so you don't really, you don't want to get yourself confused and you don't want to get yourself frustrated. Okay. Um, I learned a lot of it just by clicking around, <laughs> you know, clickety click, 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 finding things. <laughs> All right. So <laughs> Dawn says she's made the chicken butt coasters. They're kind of like that, but not quite exactly. <laughs> I just wanted to do something super fun. Um, and the best thing is if you're going to make these, don't tell people that are coming over to, if you're having family or friends over for Thanksgiving, don't tell them. Just set them out on the table and see if they can figure out what it is. <laughs> okay. <clears throat> well, <clears throat> that's all I've got for you today. I was a little concerned that we weren't going to get to have this today because I got a notice for jury duty for this week. So, um, but they didn't need me. I, I, um, was able to go online and see if my number came up and my number didn't come up. So I didn't have to go. So I was super glad about it. Cause I told my husband, I said, I'm going to have to rearrange my whole schedule. <laughs> I didn't have to. And I'm super glad I didn't have to. <laughs> all righty. So I'm going to let you go on that note. I want you all to have a super duper day and a super duper week. And, um, I do have a tutorial for tomorrow as well, ready to go, um, but also tune in on Friday. We are going to have us a gobble gobble blast. <laughs> All right, I'm going to let you go, and I'll see you next week. <laughs>